Good morning, church. Great to see you guys in the building this morning. Let's see you guys at home. Shall we stand in the building? Let's just pray. Let's lift our hands and just invite the Holy Spirit to come and do what he does best. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the privilege of being this morning in the building and in our homes. Lord, again, we say at the outset of the meeting, whatever you've got for us, Lord, this morning, we say yes. We don't miss out on anything you've got for us, Lord. And Holy Spirit, Lord, just come and do what you do best, Lord, we ask. We come, we come to worship you this morning, Lord, King of kings and Lord of lords. And so we just commit everything to you in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Let's worship together.
great are you, Lord. Wow. That's who we come to worship this morning. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And as part of our worship this morning, together as we just come around the table and just think of what Jesus has done for us as we give him thanks. Great is the Lord that Jesus accomplished it all for us when he died on the cross and on the third morning he rose from the grave and death was defeated. And we come this morning to celebrate your goodness to us, that Lord you made a way. And so Lord this morning as we take these emblems, as we take the bread, as we take the cup, we think of the words of Paul to the Corinthian church when he says, for I pass unto you what I received from the Lord himself on the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way he took the cup of wine after supper, saying this cup is the new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this to remember me as often as you drink it, for every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you're announcing the Lord's death until he comes. Let's just wait a second and just give thanks to God as we take the bread together, just hold it in our hands and just, just, just thank God for what he's done for you this morning in the building and in our homes. As we just take the bread, just hold it in and just thank him. Thank you, Jesus, what you've done for us. We thank you, Lord, that you made a way. You are the way, the truth and the life. And as we take the bread this morning, we thank you for your amazing love to us, that you were willing to give your life for us. Just thank him in your hearts this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Let's take the cup together to the king. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us. Wow. Amen. Great to see you guys this morning. And Yvonne's just going to come and tell us now what's going on the next few weeks. Thanks, Yvonne. Well, good morning, everyone. Good to see you all in the building and great to uh, see everyone who's watching us online. And hope you've all had a good week. I know some people have managed to get away and had half term and whatever, so I hope it's been a good week for you. And um, congratulations to Mike, who completed two marathons, two marathons in 15 days. Isn't that fantastic? Give him a clap. That's good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. You know what? He obviously takes after me, doesn't he? <laughs> no. <laughs> but well done, Mike. Um, okay, so there's no kids' church or youth cell in the building this morning, but the latest episode of Kids Zone is going to be on after the notices and then the kids church and youth cell will be back on in the building next Sunday and um, the crash room is open if anyone needs to use it but the children are very very welcome to stay in the service so just a few notices for this week we've got um young at heart on Wednesday morning 11 o'clock and so if you would like to come or if you want to find out a little bit more about it have a quick chat with Alwyn. Where are you, Alwyn? Give us a little wave. Alwyn's waving over there. So you want to find out a little bit more about Young at Heart, have a little chat with Alwyn, and she'll fill you in on all the details. And then this week, the small groups are meeting on Wednesday and Thursday evening. Um, if you'd like to find out more about being part of a small midweek group, then ask Steve or myself at the end of the service. And then Thursday at 1.15, it's Chatter Tots all back again. And then next Sunday, normal service with Kids Church and Youth Cell. And then we've got a few advance notices for your diary. Um, Friday the 12th of November um, at 7 p.m. here in the building. Now, you really don't want to miss this if, if you can't help it, but we're going to be having an evening of extended worship and prayer it's going to be an evening of prayer and worship and specifically praying for all nhs staff and healthcare workers who've worked all the way through um the covid and that sort of stuff really so we're just going to pray for them then sunday the 14th of november it's a couple of weeks away now we've got cafe church and we've got die jones with us again that's kate's mum for those of you who were here last time i'm sure you will say how much you enjoyed die singing so she's here with us again sunday the 14th of november and then Sunday, the 21st of November, we've got Kevin Pete with us. 
which is fantastic, woohoo! And then Sunday, the 5th of December, we've got James Glass with us. And James took over from um, Kevin. He's the Elam's regional leader for Scotland and the North West. So there's two great um, speakers there coming very soon. So great few weeks ahead of us. Now, this morning, if you want to make an offering, there's some white buckets at the side if you want to use those. And we've got a few prayer requests as well. Now, how many of you have been to Kevin Lee? In the, I don't know in the building, you've been to Kevin Lee, and you know Dave Morgan, Dave and Jackie Morgan. Unfortunately, Dave Morgan is quite unwell at the moment. We've seen them in August, and he was going through lots of tests and things then, but he's had a cancer diagnosis, so he's quite unwell at the moment so we're going to pray for him this morning um nigel has had quite a mixed week he's had some good days and he's had to have a blood transfusion some days when he's been tired so we need to really pray that the CAR t cell therapy works for him dave and lindsay dave's still in the hospital he's having physio every day and he's waiting to see the speech and language team and this morning we pray for addy as well it's been a difficult time for addy and her family and you know we're all aware of people who are going through difficult stuff at the moment with their health and difficult issues. And, it, you know, what better thing can we do but pray? And um, I was just reading in 2 Corinthians 1, just a verse 9 to 11, and it, Paul tells us about how effective prayer is. And he was talking about how particular it was when he was in danger in Asia. And he just says these words. He says, in fact, we are expected to die. But as a result... We stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely only on God who raises the dead. And he did rescue us from mortal danger and he will rescue us again. We have placed our confidence in him and he will continue to rescue us. And then verse 11 says these words, and you are helping us by praying for us. <laughs> so we're helping those people that we are praying for. Remember that. It says, and you are helping us by praying for us. Then many people will give thanks because God has graciously answered so many prayers about our safety. That just really encourages us to pray, doesn't it, really? So if you're able to stand, shall we just stand and let's just pray this morning? Yeah, so Father God, we're incredibly thankful that we are here today and we thank you for your incredible love towards each one. We thank you that we know that we are loved by you, Lord God. We thank you that your hand is upon our lives and we thank you this morning that we've got breath in our lungs and that we're able to be here and just spend time together worshipping you, knowing that you are in the midst of us, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that as we pray, our prayers do make a difference. We thank you for that, Lord. And we know at this time there are you know, many people that are close to us, Lord, many people that we know well, family members who are really, really struggling, especially in the midst of some really difficult health issues. And we just, we thank you for the medical teams, Lord, the doctors and the nurses and healthcare workers, for all those people, you know, who work alongside those who are ill and in new treatment. But we just pray at this moment in time, Lord, for those, Lord, in particular, we think of Dave Morgan and we think of Nigel, we think of Dave and Lindsay, and we think too of Addy, and, and for anyone else who comes to mind, we just pray for these dear ones at this moment in time, Father God, that you would lift them up, Lord God, that they would know your perfect peace and your presence, that you will give them the strength and the grace for each and every day, Lord God. And we just pray, Father God, we know that you are the healer. We thank you, God, that you are the healer, that you are the one who raises the dead. <laughs> who else can we come to, Lord? And we just commit everyone to you, Lord, who needs help this morning, that you'll minister to them, Lord, right where they're at. We pray that each one would know you, Jesus, as Lord and Savior. And so we thank you, Lord, for our time together. And we pray that you'll speak into our lives and touch our hearts this morning, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So I think the notices will now come on the screen. So get your toes tapping. <laughs> All right.
Good morning, church family. How are you doing? How's half term been? I'm out for a walk this autumn day. A little bit blustery, but I'm wrapped up, got my hat on. It's actually Jackson's hat, and I'm ready to go. Today, we are thinking around light. I wonder if that's something you've been thinking about this week at all. Jesus said that he is the light of the world and that we get to be part of shining that light too. So let's take part in listening and learning. Let's invite God to show us some great things today and let's join together to praise him and think about the good things that we can do to show Jesus to the people around us. One word of encouragement that you give to someone else, one moment or one expression of faith to change someone else's life. For those of you that are disciples of Jesus, I wanna show you exactly what Jesus says you are. He uses two metaphors in Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter five, he says, you're also the light of the world, you're shiny. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. It just shines, darkness, never overcomes the light. And Jesus says, you are light. In the same way, Jesus says, let your light shine before others. Let your love influence people toward Jesus. Let your light shine that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. You are the light of the world Like a city on a hilltop I be hidden. No one likes a lamp. Puts it on the baskets where no one can see it. Instead, you take a lamp, put it on the stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. And shine your light, shine your light so everyone will know where it comes. You are the light of the world Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden No one likes a lamp And then puts it on the basket Swear no one can see it In the same way let your deeds Shine out for all to see So everyone will praise your head shine and point people to Jesus. I wonder how the early church did that. Let's have a look at the next clip coming up. Today's play comes from a book in the Bible called Acts. Can you shout Acts? Yes. In Acts, we see a team of people who loved God and wanted to learn more about Him. They shared all they had with each other. They ate together and prayed together. God was doing amazing miracles in and through His team. God's team helped everyone around them. If someone needed food to eat, a place to live, or clothes to wear, God's team would help them right away. Every day, God's team hung out together. Their hearts were happy. They praised God by singing songs and telling Him how much they loved Him. The people on God's team were kind to all people. And every day, God added more and more people to His amazing team.
well, there's been lots for us to think about and join in with today. I'd love to pray with you. So if you want to, you can close your eyes wherever you are. Thank you, God, that you love us. Thank you, Jesus, that you gave the best example of showing us how to shine the light of your Father. And thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're always with us wherever we go. I pray that my church family would know that today. Amen. Amen. Well, have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you again for another Kids Zone really soon. Bye. Bye. Well, give them an applause. Haven't, haven't the kids team done a great job? Fantastic. Well done, Kate, Louise, Cherif, and, and Linda M. Done a fantastic job with the kids' church. Fantastic. Well, just to say, over the past two months from August, been looking at Matthew 5, 6, and 7. I don't know about you, but the more I look at it, it's the way we think. It doesn't have to affect our heart, doesn't it? Uh, the way we think and our heart are connected. So what happens if our mind is not good, it affects our heart. And if our heart's not good, it's the, it affects the way we think. And so for me, it, 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 it showed me how important it is to have our, you know, the right mindsets in our lives, to have the right heart, attitudes in our lives as well. And so in this amazing sermon, what Jesus gives on Matthew 5, 6 and 7, known as the Sermon on the Mount, he tells the crowd that they have to change the way that they think. It's a massive key. This morning we have to change the way that we think the biggest challenge we face is the way we think which ultimately affects our heart issues the condition of our thinking needs to be set on heavenly things not on earthly things Jesus in this sermon tells the people that if you want a heart that is full of heaven's reality first your mind must be directed away from earthly things and directed towards heavenly things. It's so important. This takes place by those who put their trust in him, who recognise a need for a saviour. Do you this morning recognise your need for a saviour? Over the weeks we've been looking at Jesus, what Jesus says about anger issues and making vows that we can't keep that worry won't change a thing that the most important thing in life jesus says is to chase after him we've also looked at what it means when it says seek the first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things will be provided for you we've also looked at what jesus said about taking revenge in your own hands and what Jesus said about those major issues, those major life issues, was in complete contrast to the way the people lived. It is still in complete contrast to the way we live today. Jesus asked this question, and he asked us this morning, what is the motivation behind everything that we do? I say that again. What is the motivation behind everything that you do? What is the motivation behind everything what I do? Because everything we do comes from the motivation of our heart. Do we try to impress the people around with our performance? Or do we do everything with a pure heart and motive? We've also looked at how Jesus tells the crowd to keep prayer simple. Have you found a spot in your house where you can just sit down and just spend time with God? The best time of the day for you. To find a quiet place and spend time in his presence. That's what Jesus tells the people in the crowd. And he says, allow him to love you and allow your heart to reflect, to reflect this love back to him. It's a two-way thing. He loves us and we love him. And we allow him to just speak, speak to our hearts. He, saw, he says to us, keep things simple. Keep things simple. Don't spend all of our time gathering wealth. Because wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. 
I don't know about you, but when you look on planet Earth, there are loads of things in competition for our hearts, aren't they? The temptation is to strive after earthly wealth. But Jesus says these words, No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Our heart, your heart, my heart, is the control centre for life. Our life is a reflection of our heart attitudes. Proverbs 4, 23 says these, Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. The heart is a well from which all the issues of life gush forth. Wow, it's incredible, isn't it? And Jesus is saying, keep guard of your heart. Above all else, keep guard of your heart. It is the wellspring of life. Your life gushes forth from your heart. Jesus was telling the crowd these words, you must guard your heart at all times and watch over it so that your heart follows hard after the things of God and is not distracted by the things of this world. Who gets distracted by the things of the world easy? Or is it just me? We all do, don't we? But Jesus is saying, guard your heart. The Message Bible puts it like this. The place where your treasure is, is the place you will most want to be and end up being. Everything around you, or the adverts, or the advice, everything on the television, everything you pick up in the newspaper, in the magazines, are all in competition for your heart. You know that. And all these things tempt us to trust in earthly things rather than on the one who gives us life. What is your focus today? What is my focus today? What is our focus today? Jesus asked that question to the crowd on the hill. The temptation to hold onto earthly things weighs heavy on us. You know that? Our old ways, our old mindsets, our old attitudes, the way we judge, the way we look at things. And that's what we're going to look at in a minute. The temptation to hold onto earthly things weighs heavy on us and tends us to trust on our riches instead of our Heavenly Father. Jesus is saying that Father God wants our heart. Jesus then continues in Matthew 7, and this is what he says. Do not judge others. Wow. We have to remember that Jesus is telling us how to really love, to really love as followers of God. Time and time again in his sermon, Jesus reminds us to avoid hypocrisy. We are not to be hypocrites. Jesus in Matthew 7 verse 1 to 6 speaks about hypocrisy again, and he does so in the context of judging. This is what it says. Do not judge others, and you will not be judged. For you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. The Message Bible puts it like this. Don't pick on people. Jump on their failures. Criticise their faults. Unless, of course, you want the same treatment. That critical spirit as a way of boomeranging. What a great way to put it. I don't know about you, but every time you put, on, you put the news on, Everybody's criticising everybody else, aren't they? Even when you go to the shops, you can hear people criticising other people, can't you? We've become a, a nation of critics, haven't we? The Passion Translation puts it like this. Refuse to be a critic full of bias towards others and judgement will not be passed onto you. We are called not to be people who are harsh, and full of our own opinions and ideals. Have you ever been with a person who's full of their own opinions? Have you ever been with a person who's full of their ideals? Don't know about you, but it gets on your nerves, doesn't it? 
Don't you wish you can? Why don't you shut up? Eh? Jesus is saying we are not to judge others with pride or arrogance and evil in our hearts. We are not to judge in a way where we think we are superior to others. And we are not to judge in a way where we are playing the place of God. Let me just tell you this morning, say to the person next to you, you are not God. You are not God. You know that. You're not God. This is the main point of this passage. If we play the place of God and we are harsh in our judgments towards others, we will also have harsh judgments placed against us. We are to practice mercy and grace. Just as God pours out mercy and grace upon us. Aren't you pleased that God pours out mercy and grace upon you? If you and I have this type of attitude of judgment towards others, then we have not truly been changed by God. And as a result, we are still subject to the judgment of God. When we ask Jesus into our lives, when we asked the Holy Spirit to come and dwell in us, something happened. We were supposed to change. We're not the same. It wasn't the same what we was before. We're different. If you and I have been changed by Jesus, live as someone who's been changed by Jesus. You know what I'm saying? I say that again. If you and I have been changed by Jesus, live as someone who's been changed by Jesus. Because when people are with you, they want to know what you've got. And they will want to know, what is it what makes you different? What is it that you're not critical? Why is it that you're not judgmental? Why is it that you listen to people's opinions and you don't judge them, even though you might not agree with them? We are people who've been changed by the love of Jesus, who's poured his grace and mercy upon us, and we're called to pour our grace and mercy on others. Jesus then goes on to give an amazing il illustration so that we can understand what he's talking about. The Message Bible puts it like this. It's easy to see a smudge on your neighbour's face and be oblivious to, to the ugly sneer on your own. For those watching this morning, I've got a smudge on my face this morning. You probably can see it. I woke, uh, what happens when I have um, a flare-up, I have a rash come on my face or my body. And on first, Thursday morning when I woke up, the rash came on my face. I look in the mirror and I go, oh, what's happened? It just comes. And so it lasts a few days. And so if you can see the smudge on my face this morning, it's because of my flare-up. And it looks awful. It really does. But it's easy to see a smudge on your neighbour's face and be oblivious to the ugly sneer, sneer on your own. Or other translations say this, why do you look at the splinter in your friend's eye but, no, but don't notice the beam of wood in your own eye? What's Jesus saying there? What he goes on to say, how can you say to your friend, let me take the splinter out of your eye when you can't see past the beam of wood in your own eye? Hypocrite. First take the beam of wood out of your own eye, then you will see well enough to deal with the splinter in your friend's eye. There is something about us humans, how we find it far easier for us to judge others than it is to judge ourselves. Is that true? Jesus is calling us out on this. He's saying we must look at our own thoughts, look at our own attitudes and motives. It's far easier to look at what someone else is, someone else has, or is doing, and not examine ourselves. You know that? We can all notice the smallest sin in someone else. Just a splinter, just a speck. But we don't notice the huge sin in our own hearts, a massive beam of wood. But listen to what Jesus says. 
when you first deal with the sins in your life first, once you've removed the log from your own eye, you will be able to see better and help the other person to remove the splinter from their eye. What a contrast. We become men and women who can help others. When we do that, when we put the things right in our own lives, we can then help others to get from, help them to put the stuff in their life right. We can become men and women who can help others become the person God's called them to be because we have first dealt with, with, with our issues in our own lives and become the person that God wants us to be. Jesus then goes on to say that not, not everyone will be receptive to the truth of God's love and his ways. There are people around us, family, work colleagues, neighbours, who do not value the truth of God. But once the beam of wood is out of our eye, we're at a point where we can share God's truth with someone. Do you get the picture of what Jesus is saying here? However, sometimes those people who we love will not be responsive and we should practice good judgment in those situations. That's what Jesus is saying. Jesus gave similar instructions to his disciples when he sent them out to share the truth of God in Luke 10. For your homework this week, read Luke 10 and see what he tells the disciples to do. He has given us everything we need and Jesus has set a precedent and given us instructions for proclaiming God's truth and doing so with discretion and discernment knowing that some will reject it. I don't know about you, I honestly thought what's happened the last two years that it would turn people to God. But I don't know about you, but I feel like the opposite has happened. It's like it's made people's hearts even harder towards God. Have you found out, or is it, or is it just me? I honestly thought, what's gone on that people would call out to God, that people would call on his name? But to me, the opposite has happened. And many, many believers before COVID, their hearts have grown cold as well. But Jesus says, we have to love. We have to show grace and mercy. We have to look at ourselves, our own issues. But God has, has, has laid the precedence. He has given us everything we need. And Jesus has set a precedent and given us instructions for proclaiming God's truth and doing so with discretion and discernment, discernment knowing that some will reject it. But when that happens, we must continue on. And we need to share with others that Jesus is still the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way. He's the one who's going to change things. Should we stand in the building? Let's just spend the next minute and just think of ourselves where in this past week have we been critical? Have we been judgmental? Have we said anything harsh about somebody or to somebody's face? None of us are. We all do it. We shouldn't, but we do. We're human. Let's just say to God, I'm sorry for it. It's not. Just say, God, I was sorry for being harsh. I was sorry for being critical. Thank you that you show grace and mercy upon me and I've got it to others. Father, thank you that you made a way. That Lord, you tell us if we follow you, if we allow you, Holy Spirit, to change us, that become the men and women we've always were meant to be.
before the creation of the world. That you've got a perfect plan for each one of us, Lord, your sons and daughters. This morning, Lord, we come and ask your Holy Spirit to keep on changing us. To keep doing the work that we need, Lord, in our lives. To be thought of you, Holy Spirit. To spend time in your presence. Because we know, Lord, where your presence is, your glory is. And so this morning, Lord, we ask you to come and just touch us where we are. In the building, in our homes. Help us this week, Lord, that when our mind, all of a sudden, we want to say something critical, or we want to judge, or we want to say something which is not helpful, which is harsh. Help us, Lord, just to think of your words in Matthew 6 and 7, where, it tell, where, where we just seek you and look at those saying, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus say? And so, Lord, we thank you for this amazing sermon. We thank you, Lord, that it just challenges our hearts, Lord, and it challenges our minds. And that's a good thing. But I just, my prayer is that, Lord, for myself and for the church, that when we finish this series on Matthew 5, 6, and 7, we will be changed people. We will change the way we think. We will allow you, Jesus, just to change us into the people we was always meant to be. And so, Holy Spirit, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Let's worship together.
word is a lamp unto our feet. Yes, Lord, this morning, Jesus, we just declare that we love you. You're everything to us, Lord. We declare that we love you. We'll be saying goodbye to you guys at home now. Have a great week. Don't forget, next week, youth cells on, kids' church is on. It'll be great to see you in the building. And we're just going to continue now in the building together. Yvonne's just going to share something.